Hey all, Kurt Chan, Technical Evangelist on the Fusion 360 team, and today I want to show you what's new to CAM for Fusion 360. And if you can't tell, it's actually the turning functionality that we've added. Right here on the screen we actually have a Tarmox Slant Pro lathe, and actually let me show you where you can get one of these models. If you do a Google search for Tarmox, or go to their website and you do a backslash solid-models, there you can actually see all the models that they have, from vices to accessories, and you can see right here I have the Slant Pro lathe. I can click on and download any one of those models. The nice thing about this, I can actually use it on the simulation side for interference detection as well as even collision detection. So hopefully that helps you out. Let's go ahead and hop back over to Fusion. And uh, what I did is I created a selection set of the cover. And if I right click, I can just go ahead and hide that. And let's just zoom right in and let me show you exactly what we're going to be machining. You can see this small piece that will be turned, but as well as can be thrown on a mill to finish up a lot of the holes and some of the other cuts. But this gives you a great representation of how it would sit within the chuck as well as the transparency of the original stock. Let's go ahead and dive in a little bit further and take a look at the, the model in itself and let's walk through and set it up something like this. So step number one is you're always going to start with the setup. Click on Setup, drop down to New Setup. From here now, you can drop down into Operation Type. You see I have Turning or Mill Turn. This is a great way where you can actually go through and start orientating and getting things kind of positioned how you want it. One thing I do like to do is I always like to you know manipulate, and it doesn't matter how you want to work with it, but one thing I like to do is really manipulate and, and get this work coordinate system set up correctly. So what you can do is you can actually, if I hit the head, the stem of the arrow and then click one of these faces, it makes it perpendicular to that face because the tool's gonna be coming in on, the, on that Z axis. If I want to, I'm gonna, if, which I will need to actually, is go to stock, drop down on their fixed size and come here over to relative size cylinder. And now from here I can say, well, let me add a little bit of material on the back side because that needs, you know, the chuck needs to hold on to it. And maybe even give a little bit of extra material on the front because I'm going to need to face the part. And then even on the side if I want to as well. And once I have all that set up, just say OK. And now there that is. So let's go ahead and dive right in. And you can see now I have the turning icon on the, cabin, the cam ribbon toolbar. If I drop down on the turning, go to, well, of course, turning face. Very similar to how we work with it on the milling side. Do a face operation, might as well do a turning face operation. Get rid of some of that, that front stock to have a nice smooth face. Turning, you can see now the menus all look the same. I have five tabs, it has everything from the tool, the geometry, the, the radii, uh, where the, the heights are gonna be moved in, the passes as well as linking. And let's go ahead and take a look at this. If I click select, pick a new tool, Filters out all my tools, and you can see for operation, I have turning operations that I can pick and filter out tools, even turning types. And I'm gonna go and just pick one of the initial tools that I have, and just like a face operation, I already recognizes that, that amount of stock, recognizes the part, just say okay. And let's go ahead and just take a look at this right here off the bat. I can right click, say simulate. Let's turn on the stock, and let's just take a look at what's gonna happen here. It's gonna come in and face that part remove that that piece of material so what's going to be next well what I want to do is I'm going to use under turning a turning profile because what what's going to happen here is I want to remove all this material around and then come and I can do even the groove operation here as well there's all these different ways to work with it but at least I want to show you a high level so you know how you can at least get started and then look out for some more cam videos on our YouTube channel as well if you haven't taken a look at that so next piece is under turning, I'm going to drop down and go to turning, we said turning ch -ch -ch profile. So from here, under select, I'm going to drop down and pick my next tool, for example, say OK. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off allow grooving because, you know, I'm going to come in with a different tool because you see how this is a little bit higher. I'm going to come in with a different tool to 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 remove this area here. I'm we'll going to say OK. And you can see right there, uh, you know, it's going to go ahead and machine that out. Let's go ahead and take a look at this profile. Right click, edit. Fortunately, I didn't turn click off the allow groove and that's why you saw it dip in. I'm going to say OK. 
and that's exactly what I want. So the beauty about this is that it's gonna show you that preview. If you make a mistake or you accidentally forget not to unclick something, that profile and that, that, that view that you're gonna see here with the toolpath is really gonna tell you a lot. So always something to keep in mind. So that looks great. I can right click on setup, come down here to simulate. Let's just take a look at this guy, turn on the stock. And you can see it actually has given us exactly what we're looking for here. So first face it, then come in, use that turning profile right there. It's looking great, perfect. And uh, it's actually leaving you know some, some material on there. So uh, it's a roughing strategy. And what do we wanna do next? Well, what I'm gonna do is go and close this out. I actually can, if you guys aren't familiar with the derived operation, is I can take all those same parameters from this profile, tooling, uh, all the inputs I've created, and uh, apply it again. So if I right click, I can say create a derived operation of turning, do a turning profile. And on this example, under passes, I'm just gonna turn off the rough, the roughing passes. And uh, of course I didn't have stock to leave turned on, so I can leave that off, say okay. It's gonna come in. I can even come back over here to, to profile, right click, edit, make sure that I leave stock to leave turned on, go back to passes. Oh, might as well leave stock to leave, right? Cause I wanna do a finishing pass with that second profile. Say okay. And things are gonna look great. Number one, leave some stock on here and then come by and then finish it up with that, that finishing pass, which is nice. So let's take a look at this area right here, the grooving area. And how this works is under turning, drop down, under groove. And what we're gonna do is under select, let's go in and see it filtered out because it knew exactly the operation I picked. I'm gonna now pick in my library the groove square. I have that all set up, say okay. And from here now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, well, what geometry do I want to pick? So under geometry, I'm gonna turn on confinement. And this is really key. If I go in and rotate the model around, let's take a look at this. What do I want it to groove? So let's gonna look at this face, zoom in a little bit more, that face here, 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 all the way up to here. We even pick this face right here. Let's look at face four. That's exactly what we want to groove right within that. Go and say, okay and go through and it's gonna exactly do what it what it needs to do. So if I go in and simulate this, right click, say simulate, you're gonna see exactly what's gonna happen here. Go and say play, come in and face it, come on and let's speed this guy up, do exactly what we're looking for, looks great, do the profile, do a finishing pass of the profile, maybe probably need to extend the tool, as well as do that grooving area right there. Looks great. So basically, we have, we're pretty much 90% of the way there. Lastly, I can get into some other operations. Let's go and take a look at this in, a, in another fashion. Is maybe, uh, you know, kind of in incorporate uh, some of the other things we do have here. Um, under drill, I can come in under drill, do go and select the tool. If I uh, scroll all the way down in, the, in my tool library, I have a 14 millimeter drill. Say okay, and I can just pick that face to drill, as well as come over here to cycle and do uh, deep drill full retract or pec drilling. Say okay, go and drill that guy right out. As well as too, remember how we added material on the stock, material to the back side of this? Maybe I wanna cut that off. Well, I can now finish up and, and do something along the way of under turning, drop down to turning part, and it's actually gonna recognize that back piece that it needs to cut off. All I have to do is just say okay, recognize this, use a groove tool, and it's gonna go ahead and just chop that guy off. So let's take a look at this in full in, on the full workflow. Right click on setup, come down here to simulate, and let's go and turn on the stock, and let's take a look at this guy. Go ahead and hit play, face it, come in and do the profiling, then come on over, probably do that finishing pass, groove it out, drill, which is that what I'm looking for, and then come in and get rid of that guy right there. So hopefully this gives you an idea of how, how we use the turning operation and all the turning tool paths within Fusion 360 and the What's New release. And the big thing too is one last thing is this is really key. If I go in and edit one of these profiles, this is one thing I really like. I know a lot of people don't know about this, but if I actually come on over to let's say the 
uh, like a roughing pass and let's say if I have a roughing overlap if I right click I can always make these these values I key in default but if I now I now have the functionality to do edit expression and in here now I can change the the equations the parameters anything I want so that's always a nice thing to keep in mind so once again look out for more turning videos to come on our YouTube channel and uh, hopefully this helped you guys out uh, give us some feedback looking forward to hearing what you guys are doing with it and uh, don't hesitate to reach out again thanks again guys